Hey everyone, it's Andres. Welcome to another episode of the program. And in this one, it's been a while since I've done a, I guess, hands-on software uh, walkthrough or slash tutorial. I'm not doing a tutorial on this one, but I will explain to you some of the steps that I took to be able to achieve what you see on the left side of your screen here. I am using the CDMA variant for Verizon of the BlackBerry Key One. I did buy it as soon as it became available at blackberry.com way back in the day. And as you can see here, here's the model number. I'm using Visor so I could share my screen uh, from my uh, Android here. And as you can see, it's running Android Oreo. The security patch this build came with was June 5th, 2019. And here's the build number, ABY299. I'll tell you how I ended up doing this to get it to work, but your mileage may vary. Now, for those of you watching, whether you're watching on YouTube, Rumble, or Odyssey, I'm gonna leave a, any links that I'm referring to in the description down below so you can learn more about this. But where you can get the build that I'm that I'm gonna to refer to is from the Crackberry forum thread that I'll be leaving on there. I'm not gonna give you a walkthrough of how to do the auto loaders. I'm gonna let I'm gonna to yield to other people and I'm not gonna exactly tell you what tools that you need because a lot of this was trial and error, and in the end. This is how I did it. That doesn't mean that's the way to do it. So if you want to attempt it, you do so at your own risk. That's why I'm not doing a walkthrough. I'm only sharing my experience and how I how I was able to get this to work. Now, people have asked me in the Crackberry forum how I got this to work and if it is at all possible that uh, I'm not doing this correctly to see if uh, the phone is running on 3G uh, towers because for Verizon devices, it this thing is still using CDMA, not just all GSM like other places that, that offer like at and T-Mobile. So Sprint and Verizon are the last two CDMA and basically Sprint got picked up by T-Mobile. So that's gonna go the way of the dinosaur. But let me show you uh, here as I do some kind of, um, uh, I guess showing off if you will. I'm pulling up the Verizon uh, networks here. So this is running on, on Verizon. These are the network options that I get. It's global, LTE and CDMA. My experience works the same. I can make and receive phone calls. I can send text messages and, and MMS just fine. And I also have no issues with data. And as you can see, I'm usually in a dead zone, but uh, I'm, I have a pretty good connection more or less to Verizon's 4G LTE, three to four bars on average from where I am at work, which is pretty impressive. So I like that. Now, when it comes to data to test, if I'm able to just get phone calls and um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, and, and SMS to work. The only options that I have to, and I Googled this too. So if you have any other way I can do this, please let me know, drop it in the comment section down below, uh, or even on the Crackberry form that I linked to, cause uh, I am uh, responding and I'm seeing the messages there. This is the only place I can find to go, to come turn off cellular data. Okay, so I'm turning off cellular data. So now it's gonna be connected just to basically like one X or three G. I can make and receive calls on this and I can send and receive SMS. I cannot send or receive MMS. So that I have to assume that's being fed off the data. Now, I uh, let me just do a quick phone call test, might as well. This is just a general number. I use this device on Google Voice only, so that's why it's telling me it can't reach the Google Voice servers. That's fine, I'm gonna use the carrier number. All right, so there is that phone call. Let me get out of this and go back to this. Now I'm gonna turn the set of the data back off. Uh, I'm back on because I have nothing else to really show in that respect. But SMS, like I said, works, but not MMS when you are when you have data off. So like I said, if I'm doing this wrong, let me know uh, just, to, just to test to see if this device is communicating directly to only um, the the 3G service of Verizon. That's what some people want to know. I live in a heavily populated area, LA and greater Orange County areas, and that's where I work too. So it could be that I have some of the more advanced towers. That tends to be because 5G is also available here. Obviously, this one doesn't do it or use it, but it's okay. That's not the point. Uh, let me go back to about phone. All right. So that's been my experience there. It is running Android Oreo. Uh, just to show the Oreo. There it is. Let me go back out of this. Okay. All right. Now, how did I do this though? Um, how did I get the build ABY299 to work? 
Okay, so there are a couple of things. I do have, as you can see, because I've tinkered with a few things, I've turned my Verizon HTC 1M8 into a Lineage OS phone, uh, thanks to Sunshine, to be able to help unlock and S, S off and unlock the bootloader. Um, and I've been tinkering around with the Essential phone to do the same. Priv, uh, lost cause there, so I didn't try it. So here uh, is my key one uh, build that I did use. This is the last official Verizon uh, build number, supposedly. That's what I was able to uh, find and research. I had it as a backup just in case I screwed things up. This was the Oreo update that uh, I was going to try, the ABY299. And here is another variation of ABY299, which I'll get to in a little bit. I did go to BlackBerry.com and downloaded the BlackBerry USB drivers, but I didn't install them quite yet. I depended on the universal USB drivers for Android and the platform tools to be able to uh, install what I needed to install. So the first thing I did was try installing this guy, uh, ABY299, which is the official one that was meant for GSM. I believe this is mostly from Europe because I don't think the 8.1 rollout happened in the United States per se, but you can still try to uh, sideload, uh, sideload this one. Um, I tried it and I was stuck on fast boot. So every time I turn off the phone, turn it back on, or try to boot into, into the system, it would just stay stuck on fast boot. So I turned it off, back on, fast boot. So it won't go beyond fast boot when I tried installing this. So I thought, crap, maybe I screwed things up. So I tried to downgrade back to the official Verizon build, which is supposed to be this one, ABO098, um, which is supposed to be the January patch update of, of uh, January 2019 and the crack uh, patch for the, the security concerns. And when I installed this one, it was stuck on the BlackBerry logo. And I, crap, how do I get back into fast boot? I was manually still able to get to fast boot by holding down the power button and, uh, and the volume down rocker. So that was that helped me achieve getting back into fast boot to try to figure out what else I could do from here. Um, and what I ended up doing, because by trial and error, I did find this ABY299 build for this variant. It's supposed to be um, like a Frankenstein-ish uh, build and that's the crackberry forum thread i'm leaving in the video description down below regardless of whether you're watching on youtube rumble or odyssey that's the link to the forum that people have been asking me questions and i wanted to record this video to share that experience uh since i was able to uh to boot into fast boot um i wanted to test it but i made sure to have these drivers this is the moment when i installed these drivers to make sure i had the latest update on them and then I uh, these are all auto loaders by the way and then I installed this auto loader and lo and behold I was able to get my device to work again and that's literally how it all happened I'm not a pro I could say at this I'm not that much of a novice either since I've hacked other phones before but uh, this is what I did to get this working on my Verizon variant um, and like I said uh, this thing is well, I want it. there it is it says up here Verizon so I'm on the Verizon network I wanted to show it I wanted to prove it uh, and that's basically what I, I needed to say so if you guys have any questions either you leave it at the Crackberry forums or even in this comment section down below from wherever you're watching um, I'll check it and get to it whenever I can you want me to do some more tests for science uh, let me know and I'll try to do it um, while I still have an active sim on this and I guess that's how I should end it I had an active sim it's an active SIM that I had on my Galaxy uh, Note 10, which I got from my Galaxy Note 9, and I've just been using that over and over again. So maybe that is why I'm able to get the service the way I do, that I had an active SIM that uh, that does uh, voice over LTE. Could be. I, I don't have any other data be, uh, be, beyond that. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Check out my stuff at www.theindustrysegovia.com. I am a realtor in Los Angeles, Orange County area. So if you're interested in real estate resources, you can go to segoviares.com. Links are available in the video description down below. And I have a podcast, which is available across many different podcast distributors. But anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.